12 months ago, I left Canada to be a digital nomad. I traveled to Bali, Thailand, and Indonesia, and I saved a ton of money, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm back temporarily, and I wanted to let you know that it is an amazing lifestyle if you wanna try it. First of all, I saved a ton of money. Obviously, Canada is very expensive. I lived in Bali for six months. It was very easy to bump over to Thailand for two months, and then it's very cheap to fly over to the Philippines. My average uh, cost of living was around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month uh, US, so that'd be about seventeen, eighteen a month Canadian, which is about probably seventy percent less than I was paying in Canada. There is a few drawbacks of living um, a nomad lifestyle. I'll talk about that in a second. If you were thinking about doing it, um, I'll give you a couple tips and I'll give you a couple insights so you don't fall into any trouble if you're gonna try it. Okay, tip number one, make sure you have a huge backup savings before you go. So I would go at least with $10,000 before you start traveling as a nomad. Uh, I only had $2,000 and Everything was fine. Uh, I have a recurring income online. I have a business online. I talk about that on my channel, how I make income, and you can do it too. Just check out my channel. But on month number 12, something happened. I was in the Philippines, and so you, I don't know, you can see the incision a little bit. It's covered by tape right now, but I actually fractured my collarbone. I fell off a scooter. The scooter malfunctioned. And it took three surgeries to fix, and I was rehab and I was um, out of commission for like two to three months. I'm just getting to about 90% now. I'll be going surfing again soon. Um, so that cost me four G's, four grand. And that was in the Philippines. I couldn't leave the Philippines. I had to do the surgery in the Philippines because they don't let you fly with broken bones. Uh, and I did, yes, I did have travel insurance. And the scary thing is I was talking to other people after my surgery I was asking people, do you have travel insurance? And about 80% of the people I sp spoke to do not have travel insurance. And I was horrified to find that out. I have travel insurance and they did reimburse me, but it took 60 days to get reimbursed with the injury. So they just deposited my bank account. I wasn't sure if I was going to get reimbursed. Some people say travel insurance is a scam. No, it's not. Now, there is some companies better than other. Make sure you get the absolute very best company you can find when it comes to travel insurance. And if you can find a company who pays for anything up front, that would even be better. It would have been nice if they paid for my surgery up front, but they didn't. Now, what was really scary is when I got in the accident, I was on a remote island in the middle of nowhere and the closest clinic was an hour drive. And luckily I had money on me because the ambulance, the first thing they asked for was 500 pesos to drive me to the clinic. And of course, bank machines are, there's only about three on the island and they were also a half an hour away. So if I didn't have that money on me, it would have been a huge mess. You needed money, I needed money for the clinic. That was another thousand or 1500 pesos. I needed money for medication. Like it's just, everything was a nightmare um, at that day that I got hurt. Uh, luckily I had cash on me. So always travel with lots of cash on you when you're in remote places that don't have a lot of bank machines around, like the Philippines. <clears throat> That's the first thing. And make sure you have a backup savings in case something happens, you can pay for your medical expenses and uh, make sure you have travel insurance. Also, when I was traveling abroad, I saw people really budgeting, like they were splitting meals. It was really kind of sad to see. I saw nomads splitting meals like they didn't have a lot. They didn't bring enough money with them or they didn't have a proper online income before they left. OK, going to a cheaper country and then trying to start up a, a business online business is probably risky. You should start your online business first, get it going, get a recurring predictable income first. Then you can move off and go off off seas. And there's, remember, there's tax savings. There's all kinds of huge tax savings, uh, especially if you work in other countries. Uh, the saying is the new American dream is to leave America, which is means that just there is so many, th there's thousands of people now leaving North America, UK, Australia to live in all these other countries because now you can make an income online. As for the lifestyle, it was amazing. Um, I'm just in Canada temporarily. I'm gonna be probably leaving somewhere soon. But um, Bali was amazing, it's cheap. The Philippines is even cheaper. And Thailand is amazing, it's even cheaper. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I wanted to wish everybody a Happy New Year. I haven't done a video in a while. 
I'm just getting back into the rhythm of things. If you'd like to learn um, how to create income online, I have a side hustle report in um, my link in the profile, so go check that out. Hopefully you guys are doing great and I'm gonna start pumping out some more videos uh, on the channel. I know I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. So I will talk to you in the next video. All right, talk to you later.